So, it's been more than two months since I dropped a video on how I turned a broken down OG Inucubic Photon into a modern monochrome workhorse. And I figured it is high time that I update you on how that mod's been working for me in my print farm. My name's Yasu. I'm your go-to guy when it comes to all things resin printing, resins, resin 3D printers, and cool stuff you can make with them. If that's your jam, you should totally hit the subscribe button and notification bell to see more cool resin printing videos. Now, I'm gonna break this discussion down into three key components. First being reliability, that is how uh, well has this mod held up? Has anything broken down? Is, uh, did I need to change anything up? Is there any parts I need to replace, etc., etc. Then I'm gonna talk about speed, that is how fast I'm able to push prints out relative to some of my other monochrome prints like the Creality LD 002H or the Inucubic Mono. And then finally, overall, how do I like the printer? You know, does it feel good? Is it easy to use? Again, compared to my other mono printers and in general, any of the resin printers in my fleet. And of course, when you uh, talk about the overall how I like something, is the discussion of should you do this mod on your own older or broken Inucubic Photon printer or should you just toss it and buy a new uh, mono printer? So let's get into it, shall we? So it'd be a gross understatement to say that I've been very busy lately with the holidays and having to fill a wide variety of different print jobs and orders for my shops like Liquid Artifacts, as well as doing some private uh, work for individual clients. So needless to say, I'm running tons and tons of print jobs and I absolutely have to have every one of my printers in my farm in tip top shape and being absolute units with you know perfect reliability, not having to worry about print fails, et cetera, et cetera, and I've dialed it in. So as of December 23rd, I have, according to my records, let's take a look here, run 176 uh, independent print jobs on my modded Inucubic Photon with the mono screen which totals to roughly a screen time usage of about 1,041 hours. So that is a decent chunk of time and um, data built up on how well this mod is actually working out. Um, to give you know, a pretty good idea of is this a good mod or <laughs> a not so good mod. So the 2000 hours that a lot of uh, mono screen manufacturers and resin printer manufacturers are pushing out actually might be pretty close to accurate as I'm at the halfway mark and well past uh, the, uh, the end of life mark for most RGB screens and my screen's going strong. No dead pixels, no um, weird frame shearing issues, and of course, no funkiness in um, the screen actually breaking down. So, good prints all around. Now keep in mind, I did adopt a set of rigorous maintenance procedures that were aimed at uh, avoiding prematurely damaging or destroying my screens before their intended lifetime. That included doing things like uh, filtering uh, resin out of the vat after any time the print failed, or uh, checking the FEP sheet to make sure there were no divots or micro tears that would, could potentially leak out all over the screen, and re-leveling my bed on a relatively frequent basis to ensure that I wasn't digging any of the corners into the screen and potentially um, breaking it. That being said, I did have two nasty spills uh, where a third of the screen ended up getting covered in cured resin and took a fair bit of time to get off, but the screen survived and still performs like a champ. And that is with no protection at all on the screen. No tempered glass, no thin sheets of plastic, just printing on bare polarizer. I know, I'm living dangerously and it's something I do want to revisit um, eventually. That is uh, either replacing the, uh, the screens that I use with something that does have some form of screen protection on top or devising my own uh, tempered glass solution. I'll keep you posted on which direction I end up going. Now one thing that a lot of you brought up in the last video as well as on my GitHub 
is the lack of any support glass. That is a 1A for a quarter inch piece of, you know, uh, optically clear, win you know, usually window glass in this case, um, to sit underneath the screen and provide additional support um, during the peel phase of the print. And I can definitely say I haven't noticed any damage or issues coming up as a result of that after what is probably hundreds of thousands of uh, retractions and peels over all the different print jobs I've done. Um, but again, this is first screen. I might have gotten lucky. Maybe it's how I'm running my prints. We'll see. Um, in general, so far haven't noticed any issues, but it is one of the potential branches I want to add to the modification so that folks do have the option of adding a piece of support glass underneath their screens, if they so choose. Lastly, on the topic of reliability, I do want to talk about the light source, um, where I added a 24 volt parallel LED array, similar to the ones that are used in EPEX printers. And I've noticed a dramatic improvement in the reliability of the prints. That is, I have almost no failures um, unless I severely mess something up in the settings. You know, that I can have confidence that I can just hit print and walk away from it and have zero anxiety that did it, did the uh, raft stick to the build plate? Are the supports going to stay on, et cetera, et cetera. And it's quite precise. Um, I'll probably touch on this a little bit in the speed, but it's also significantly faster than the, the old stock um, uh, you know, COB LED and reflector ray. That's not to say it's not, um, that, that setup is not good, but you can definitely see a huge difference in the speed. That is, uh, my modded version is about, on average, about 40% faster than pretty much any other mono um, resin printer I've tried, and that includes the Eligu Mars Pro 2, the Inicubic Mono, and the Creality LD002H. So to give you some hard numbers, uh, with the current resin that I'm using, which is Ministry of Resin Water Washable, which is a really nice um, water washable, US-made uh, resin that cures fast on monochrome printers, but doesn't sacrifice the details in over, you know, over baking, over curing like other fast resins do. This is something I really want to touch on in another video, so I'm not going to really talk about too much. But anyways, with uh, Ministry of Resin Water Washable, uh, with the mono, mono modifications, I'm getting 1.2 second layer cure times with, I believe, 17 second base layers. To put that in perspective, on the Inicubic Mono with the exact same resin, I have to print. I have to use 2.8 second layers, and uh, ba, 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 oh, uh, 25 second uh, base cure times. And then the LD002H, uh, you know, from Creality, slightly faster with, I believe, 2.25 second layer cure times at about 20 second base layers. And this, mind you, is all at uh, 50 microns. So you can see that on a layer uh, time and a base cure time is significantly faster. And that does really matter a lot um, with the bigger prints. So a 70 or 80 millimeter tall print will only take me, you know, four, maybe four and a half hours to print on my uh, modified, um, any cubic OG any cubic mono. I need to find a nifty name. Help me out here. Uh, if you got any names, feel free to comment down below for my mod. I just OG any cubic photon mod. Sorry, this is ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got off track. Anyways, you can definitely tell that uh, the mod, uh, you know, between the light source and the uh, monochrome screen is no compromises. So the difference in layer cure times really does make a huge impact in the final total time. So on say an 80 millimeter print, that will usually take me uh, three and a half to maybe four hours to print. Whereas that exact same print on the Inicubic Mono or the um, LD, Creality needs to do a better job naming their printers. But anyways, the, I'll call it the LDH, uh, could take that same print maybe six to seven hours. So as a business, being able to shave two to three hours off of a print on top of what is already significantly faster than uh, old generation RGB screens makes a huge difference in how many uh, minis and orders I'm able to process in a day. So final thoughts on speed. I can definitely say that the OG Inicubic Photon mods 
are significantly faster than even current generation mono printers. Uh, this is primarily because I'm pushing a significantly more uh, wattage and light energy through that mono screen. Now, whether that actually l shortens the lifetime of the screen, we'll see. So far, I haven't seen any indication of a shorter lifetime. And now, finally, I want to give my overall thoughts of what I think of the mod so far. You know, taking account what we've established with reliability, what we've established with uh, speed, and now combining it with the final point cost and price. In total, I tallied it up, um, the mod cost me about 200 to 210 dollars depending on how you, how you price your filament uh, to execute. And that is on top of already having to have either a working or partially working in cubic photon chassis, that is, and motor and some other miscellaneous things. So as a lot of you pointed out in the pr prior video, that does pretty come pretty close to costing almost as much as buying a brand new machine. However, I do take a lot of satisfaction and joy out of being able to reuse and breathe new life into old hardware. Uh, that for the most part, you know, mechanically, you know, the Z-axis for all its faults is still a workable Z-axis. I don't have any layer artifacts. I don't have any banding and ringing. So I'm going to use what works. Um, you know, it's a metal frame, the vats are solid, you know, if anything, it's probably the best vats uh, currently designed, you know, given, you know, the fact that it already pretensions FEPs, so you don't have to worry about using the cardboard frame trick um, that I've published in other videos. So for me personally, being able to upgrade the printer to something that outperforms current generation machines that you can buy, as well as being able to breathe life into older hardware is a strong draw. Now that isn't necessarily something that you may want in your particular use case or circumstance, but if you're kind of like me, that's one way to look at it. Um, so should you use this mod? It's a sort of it depends. If you want bleeding edge, you want the the challenge of you know learning more about uh, resin printers, how they work, and maybe uh, using this as a stepping stone to bigger projects, you know, new modifications, or even building and tackling your own from scratch built resin printer. This is probably a fun project to start. If you want something that you know works out of box, no tinkering, no you know no potential drama, then probably best to just grab uh, any of the uh, existing um, mono printers out there, you know, you know, the Mars, the Photon, and or the uh, Creality LDH, or any of the other brands out there. There are what, like six, seven brands now <laughs> uh, pushing uh, mono printers. Now, that being, all that being said, the, uh, my first modification was a full on gut job, you know, where pretty much I had hollowed everything out, left nothing but, you know, the motor and the chassis, really. Um, I do want to talk about, quickly, a new mod that I'm working on for the OG Photon, as well as the Eligu Mars, where you literally need to change out, in the case of the OG Photon, two parts, the screen and the board. You change out those two parts, and you will have a working 5.5-inch monochrome printer. I can't say much more on that video, it's going to be a surprise, I can't give it all away, but I can definitely say that the, um, the new modification I'm working on, where you're using, you know, changing the board and a, uh, the screen is significantly easier if you want a monochrome screen on your OG Photon compared to the, uh, the effort I had to go to in adding a 6 inch mono. I probably went overboard with rambling and talking too long about this update, but I felt uh, that a lot of you uh, deserve to know where I'm at with this modification since some of you um, kind of jumped on board and started building and did some successful builds and others are kind of on the fence and well, here's where I'm at. I love sharing what I do, what I build and uh, feel free to tell me what, you, what your thoughts are, what you want to see. Otherwise, feel free to tap that uh, subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and the notification bell to be notified whenever I push up a new resin praying video. That's it for today. I'll be back at you with a couple more new exciting videos. Bye.